Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees. It's been another very productive week in the bee yard and I'm anxious to share that with you. Um, if you remember right, just last week I mentioned that I was starting to see dandelions pop up. Well, since then, they started to come up everywhere. Just the other day I got some pretty neat footage of a bee working a dandelion. Check this out. I'm also seeing a lot of violets in my bee yard this year. Um, I didn't plant them, I don't know how they actually got there, but it's quite pretty, I must say, to see all this color in the bee yard. Now the violets, the bees don't seem to have much interest in, but I like the added color in the bee yard. Why it's on my mind, the other day I was going through one of my big 10 frame hives um, that I added a, a super on top of for winter. That was the, the food spacer that I used so that I could feed the mountain cant style where you put the wax paper on top of the frames and pour on some sugar. Well, I used a, a super or maybe it was a medium, an empty medium box to allow for that uh, pile of sugar. Well, the other day when I was making inspections, I came to this hive and I popped the inner cover and uh-oh, they ate all their sugar and with the added space they had, they started to draw some really wacky burr comb. And I wanted to share that with you um, as an educational kind of tool. Um, if you don't get them spacers off soon enough, this is what's going to happen. Um, I've also had a lot of people ask about my pullover veil that I wear. Um, some people have even asked, did I get a new one? No, I didn't get a new one. It's the same one I've always had. I just use a product called Super Clean and uh, it did a great job on my veil. It also cleaned the uh, gunk out of the inside of my smoker. Um, now one thing I want to mention is if you use it on your smoker, you want to rinse it out really, really well with water. Um, I failed to do that the first time and it only took about five minutes and I started to get some fumey smell in the smoke. So rinse it out really well. Um, as far as the veil, um, I just threw a, a little bit of a uh, super clean and in the washer with only the veil and those, those are the results. So the manufacturer of this veil is overseas, I believe in Australia. So if you wanted to get one shipped here to the United States, it's going to be rather pricey. But if that is not a turn off to you, the link to the manufacturer is listed down below. Uh, another thing I'm happy to mention that's not so much beekeeping related is morel mushrooms are up. So if you're a fan, get out there and start looking because they are starting to pop. We need a little bit more rain, which we're supposed to get here in Ohio the next couple days, Thursday and Friday. So uh, that should bring them up for the weekend, which I'm anxious to uh, get out there on the hunt. So today's video, I will be showing how I set up my hive stands. Um, we're going to go get the material. Um, the material that I use is pretty much all free, so I have to go and uh, collect those resources and bring them back here to the bee yard. So it's going to be the whole rundown. We're going to go get the supplies. We're going to bring them back here. We're going to cut them down. We're going to build the hive stands. And then at the end, we're going to see how much more room I, I gained and what the bee yard's looking like now. So I'm pretty excited about uh, the growth and uh, I'm anxious to share it with you. So I hope you'll follow the full video um, and see what you think. Okay, so to get the materials that I'm going to need to construct my hive stand, we are now at our leased farm. Uh, these are the cattle I manage. Some of these cattle are mine. But years ago, there used to be some oil wells here on the farm. And the oil tanks have since been removed and they left all of the the steel well casing just pretty much laying on top of the ground and it stretches from the front of the farm right up here and I know this one here ends just right over here where I have these white stakes but there is another section that runs to the back of the farm which is that pasture way back there so several several hundred feet 
of this steel pipe and that's what I'm going to use for my hive stand. So what I have with me today, um, I brought my ATV up from the house. We're only about an eighth of a mile from my house. Um, what we're going to do, I got my generator. I've got me an extension cord. I've got my cutting tool and I've got some cut off disc. That's what we're going to be using today to cut this pipe down into 20 foot sections. Um, I think I got me a tape measure here in my little toolbox. It's nice to see the cattle just finally starting to graze. A little bit of grass starting to come in over there. Anyway, I got my tape measure here, so I'm going to start down here at this stake where the end of the pipe is, measure back 20 feet, make me a mark, and then I'm just going to start cutting it in sections. Um, after I get a bunch of sections um, cut, I'll then use my ATV to drag those to the front of the farm, or I'll use my pickup truck to take them home. Okay, so it's been about five minutes maybe. Um, I took this piece of firewood you see here and an old tea stake and I'm using it to elevate the steel casing out of the ground like I said there isn't much topsoil laying on it um, at the most down here it was completely covered and did have a thin layer of topsoil on it but nothing real strenuous to get out you can see it left a little bit of a trench here where it was but that's all fine and dandy. That'll all close back up. So now it's time to start marking and cutting, which I got my knife here marking the first 20 foot. And we'll just keep working our way that direction. So within a matter of about 15 minutes, I've cut 100 foot of pipe. I've cut down five sections, 20 foot long. So now I just need to use my ATV, collect all these, drag them out there to the front of the farm, and uh, come back with my pickup and take them home. Okay, so I've got the pipe strapped to the side of my truck. Luckily, I only have to go about an eighth of a mile to get to my place. Um, if we look through the tree line here, right behind them trees, you can see some pine trees at the very back, at the top of the hill there. Those pine trees are actually my yard. So that's all the further I have to go, luckily, because uh, it's kind of restricting my turning ability. So the tire is gonna rub on the pipe when I pull into my drive. But other than that, it's pretty secure, ready to go. Um, I'm going to head it to the house now. So I've got them home. I just cut them down to 10 foot sections. And that's what you see here. Uh, I did have a couple pieces left that were probably uh, right around 10 foot long. The problem is, is they've got a pretty good bend in them. So they're going to have to be used for another project. Or maybe even shorter hive stands. But for now, I'm going to get these cleaned up. And... Uh, Get them ready for paint. So I'm gonna wash them with the hose, let them dry, then later we'll paint them. So they're all cleaned up. They've got their first coat of paint on them. Once that dries, I'll give them another coat and then it'll be time to start assembling our bases. Okay, so for my bases, I will be using a few different things. I like using these large square sandstones um, the problem is I just don't have enough for all the stands that I'm going to be setting up today. And you can see not all of the, my existing hive stands have them. Um, here you can see I've got a large sandstone on the bottom, a cinder block on top. Same here, and the same down here. You can also notice that down here on this one, I've got cinder blocks on the bottom, railroad ties on the top, 
Um, I actually learned last year that they need to be at least, I don't know, 15 to 18 inches off the ground. Um, and that's just due to skunks. Um, last year I had a skunk problem with this row right up here. And um, I realized that just by raising the hives, um, the skunk would go away. You keep him down low, he's going to stay entertained and keep getting fed. He's going to keep coming around. So I added another block and that fixed that problem. So I'm going to try and take and do, I think, the cinder blocks here. Move the sandstones over to this location over here. I think right straight across from my... Uh, tulip tree here will be a hive stand um, you know I'm trying to think I got a six foot mowing deck so I'm trying to make it so I can mow right between all of this right here is about as tight as I want it so we're gonna do a row back here maybe two rows so the first thing I need to do is I need to take and uh, level up these uh, stones. We're going to use the cinder blocks probably about in that location where they are right now. Um, I guess I could go a little bit more forward so they're in line with this oak tree. But anyway what I'm going to have to do is dig down a little bit on this top side so that they set more level. Right now they're tilted downhill. So I need to level them up on each side and then we'll worry about getting our pipes over here and getting them fastened. So right here is all I had to do as far as my digging. Um, basically I took my shovel, uh, notched out where I wanted to cut for the cinder block, um, took my shovel in from the front side, scooped it all out, cleaned it all out real nice. Once you get it nice and level, then place your cinder block on, check and see if it's level again, and uh, then repeat on the other side with the other stone. Okay, so what I did is I found some 4x4s just to get them a little bit higher so skunks wouldn't be an issue. So I've got my foundation stone and 4x4 on both sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check it with my level. Which you can see I've already got placed here. And if we look, I'm about a half a bubble off on the back side. And that's exactly what I want. That'll give a slight lean to the front and let the water run um, away from the uh, entrance. So now what I need to do is I need to uh, secure my pipes so they do not roll. And to do that, I'm just going to use some masonry nails and I'm going to put two out here and one in the back. So as you can see, I've got it nailed now and this is what I am, this is the pattern I used and um, this is what I've used for about five years now and it's worked rather well. Now every year I do inspect and make sure that the, the wood is still good and solid and that the nails are still secure. Um, I'm sure there would be other ways to fasten them, but this is the most uh, time efficient, works rather well, and I can go around and knock them out pretty quick this, this way. Now you could also uh, get some kind of a U clamp and put down through the wood. There's all kinds of different methods, but like I say, this is what works for me. So now what I want to do is I want to show you the completed new hive stands. We've got one here. We've got one over here. And these are all just cardboard, uh, wax coated cardboard nukes on them now. And we've got a new one here. So I've gained quite a bit of space just with these new additions. And these stands will be used first um, to let these nukes build up and get them ready for the customers. Um, as you've seen last week, most of them look pretty good, but there's still some that need to build up a little bit. And uh, so for that reason, I've transferred them to the cardboard wax coated nukes and uh, they will finish out their, their life here and those. And uh, what I've done, as you can see, I've taken a piece of this one inch styrofoam and I put it over top. That's just a little added protection from the rain and uh, I think that's going to make a big difference. Time will tell. I will keep you posted on that. So there you go. Some really simple easy to make hive stands if you've got access to steel pipe and some foundation stones, cinder blocks, 4x4s, whatever it may be. So what did you think of those hive stands? 
a little bit overkill would you do the same thing if you could get the material for free what a lot of people do is they pretty much do the same thing i did but they replace the pipe for four by fours um, so kind of the same idea just different resources used um, i do think it's very important that you get them up at least 18 inches high that way the the skunks aren't uh, pestering your bees and once the skunks pester your bees enough they're going to get pissy with you and you're going to get stung every time you go out so it kind of gives them a little bit of an attitude which you know the skunk was bothering me every night i'd probably get a little grouchy too so keep them up 18 inches high if you can so i hope you've enjoyed this video and if so you'll throw me a big thumbs up help boost it in the youtube search ranks if you haven't subscribed, please take time to do so and make sure you click on the little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. So thanks for watching JC's Bees and we'll see you next week folks.